good afternoon. My name is Ashley Cotton, and welcome to the Life Talk Show, The Panel. And today with me, I have Miss K.M. Johnson Davis and also Yolanda Whitfield. Camille could not be with us today. Uh, she's out of town, and so our prayers are with her. Um, but what I wanted to do is uh, the original idea of the panel was to bring hot topics, things that are happening in our world, and bring biblical sound truth to um, um, to uh, the panel to discuss hot topics and things that are happening to like tear down the strongholds of the enemy to just rebuke and to um, you know re uh, to replace the lies with the ultimate truth, which is the word of God. And so, without further ado, I want to introduce you to my new panelist, Yolanda Whitfield. Was born and raised in Buffalo, New York. She fought many years to get to her breakthrough in order to begin to heal from her broken past and failures. Once she decided to make peace with her painful experiences, her life began to change. Yolanda Whitfield is a proud mother, grandmother, and a two-time cancer survivor. She is passionate about empowering others to see beyond their past experiences and grow into their purpose. In 2010, she fully surrendered her life over to God and was determined to not settle for anything less than who God called her to be. In 2012 is when God gave the scars of a woman and Yolanda realized that God had an assignment for her to achieve. In 2015, she started a woman's prayer line called Powerful Virtuous Woman. She wrote her first entitled book, Scars of a Woman, Mass Revealed, in 2018. In that same year, she was ordained as a minister, and in 2021, she was elevated to an elder and prophetess um, title. And Yolanda has her bachelor's degree in accounting and business and is a certified licensed she specializes in mental health, trauma, and life coping skills. She is a motivational speaker and has spoken in prisons, juvenile homes, and churches. Scars of a Woman Ministry is being lifted to another level. The ministry's focus will be to help women strive for greatness and move into their divine purpose. Yolanda's two favorite quotes are, my faith is stronger than me, and let's get it, let's go. So let's welcome Yolanda to the panel. And also, just to give you a refresher for those who are tuning in for the first time, and I know it's been a while since we had the panel. There's been a few events and things happening. So K.M. Johnson Davis is a Southern Mississippi born lover of Jesus, minister, entrepreneur, author, and international speaker. While completing her bachelor's degree at Florida A.M., University, she founded Project Management Firm, EELLC. Together with her husband, Robert, she later founded the missions arm of their organization, Project Weathering the Storm. They also found KM Davis Ministries, an organization designed to disciple and provide for those in need so they will find purpose, faith, and relationship with Jesus Christ while reaching their full potential. KM and Robert live in North Dallas, Texas with two of their dogs, Kimberly and Russell. Okay, so now that we have the introductions, we're gonna open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day that you have made, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for the peace. We thank you for the anointing that destroys yokes, Father God. We thank you for using us as your vessels, Father God, as we surrender this show, as we surrender everything to you today to walk in obedience, Father God, to speak in love, Father God, and to reach those that you want to reach, Father God. I pray that you will bless them with ears to hear and eyes to see spiritually, Father God. I pray, Father God, that today we will plant the word of God, that there will be another to water the word of God also, and that we wait in patience, Father God, for you to bring the increase, Father God, that it is about souls, Father God, reaching those, Father God, who may be lost, Father God, who may need to be renewed in their spirit, Father God. In Jesus' name, Lord, speak through us, use us how you see fit, decrease us, Father God, and we thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading us and guiding us in all truth and understanding. In Jesus' name, we pray and we cover it with the blood Amen. Okay, so um, there's a lot that I wanted to cover, and also 
uh, the Lord has been placing on my heart for quite some time an identity crisis. That is the uh, word, the title, you know, if you want to title this, an identity crisis. And I also want to say thank you, Terrence, uh, for being here, my producer, and also allowing us to be here for the radio therapy network studio we're live here and so um i just want to give you know all my thanksgiving and to those that are watching for those that are tuned in thank you so much those who watch the replay thank you for sharing liking and commenting um i love to hear back from you and as far as what you think and so the foundation scripture is behind me uh on the on the screen but um my foundation scripture for this here for the title is Genesis 126 and Genesis 127. And so it says, Then God said, Let us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, make man in our image according to our likeness, which is not the physical, but a spiritual personality and moral likeness. And let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle, and over the entire earth and over everything that creeps and crawls on the earth verse 27 so god created man in his own image in the image and likeness of god he created him male and female he created them and so that's the foundation right there the fact that we're made in his likeness in the image of god which is a spiritual personality and moral likeness so what do you all think about that because we're going to dive in deeper, but this is just the surface of it. Well, no, um, you know, I'm just kind of thinking about um, identity. Of course, the topic is identity crisis. And then uh, the foundation scripture being Genesis uh, talking about how he created us and he made man. So that was the very beginning. So he gave us our identity. And I know right now a lot of what we're seeing in the world is that um, uh, oftentimes people don't know who they are. Um, they also don't know whose they are. Mm -hmm. And so um, it creates a, a situation. I know that um, sometimes right now part of the foundation of, of I think, the the – I don't know, the confusion in the world is because of lack of, um, you know, church, <laughs> lack of having that moral foundation, lack of having a, a, a biblical basis in their life or knowing, um, you know, just getting this, these foundational scriptures and being taught these things. Like if we start in Genesis and we really understand that God created us, he created male and female, he created them both, you know, both them. And that it wasn't just, you know, an either or, it wasn't just a, a combined effort, but it was, you know, he he instinctively and strategically created male and female, and there was a purpose that was there. And so um, I think that's like the foundation of understanding your identity. And we're not, well, a lot of our children are not being taught that are understanding that. Mm -hmm. I agree. The, the firm foundation is what needs to be laid out. And even if you don't have a church home, because church is, with, is what is inside. So even if you don't have a church home, um, I do believe find that right mentor that, that knows God, um, you know, that right individual that knows God and that can help you. Because sometimes, you know, we can be led into going in there and then it's like a whole nother worm that's open and then there's like no understanding. And some people need to be, um, explained in in more depths of what is my identity and so even with getting a bible I will honestly say get one that you can understand I mean because there's a lot out there because you know King James Version can be a depth and for me I think King James Version is more for the older than you know um, those that was raised you know before us before our time and so I, I honestly believe getting a bible that can speak to you that can break it down so a study bible um those those are definitely big help to you when you don't really understand the foundation and what god is explaining getting the study bible is definitely a start and then getting a mentor to help you when you don't understand certain things that can break it down to you absolutely and this is for um the body of Christ. I'm not going to deal with so much the world because we know that the world is going to do what the world does, but this is the identity 
of the body of Christ, of us being male and female in God and his purpose in the way that he created us to be according to his purpose, his will, and his plans. And so the definition of identity crisis is a period of uncertainty and confusion in which a person's sense of identity becomes insecure, typically due to a change in their experience, aims, or role in society. And so... Um, what I I, what I want to deal with is the sexual identity. Uh, it goes beyond, I would say, gender, right? Male, male and female. So the sexual identity, um, the roles of, of children, children acting like they grown, they don't need parenting, they don't need so adult supervision, and they're pretty much running the show, telling people what they want, how they want, when they want. Uh, the next thing would be here, um, yeah, the different roles of spiritual identity, sexual identity, di- identity of roles, and then our identity in Christ, going from a slave of sin to sons and daughters in Christ Jesus, going from a slave of sin, a slave to sin, and then coming into the fullness and the known, uh, the fullness and knowing our identity in Christ as being sons and daughters. So what do you all say to that? You know, actually, I think that all of that kind of, it, it all kind of bleeds into one another. So with the spiritual identity and then the sons and daughters, for sure, they definitely bleed into one another because we, um, we think about like our spiritual identity. When you, when you come to Christ and you give your life to Christ, what does that look like? What is the Lord, you know, what is he doing in your life? He's, he's starting to, Woo you. I always say that, you know, Jesus is the is like the best love story when we fall in love mm-hmm. with Jesus because he begins to woo you like no man could, right? He, he, he starts to pursue you and he calls you to him and you get to know him. And, and I think that that's as you are, you're learning your spiritual identity. And now it goes a little bit further when we talk about titles and um, callings and positions and things like that. But Gifts and callings come without repentance. So that happens prior to you even, you know, giving your life to God, Mm -hmm. you know. And so, um, but that that wooing, I think, or that first initial part in your spiritual identity happens when the Lord is saying, I call you mine. First John 3 and 2, where he talks about how we are his children. You know, you are a child of God. And so, um, and how he, you know, how he, that's when he's calling us to him. You know, he's calling us to him and making us his uh his child. And so, um, I, I think that first we have to understand that we are a child of God. We are children of God and not just, you know, Mary and Joseph's son, you know, mm-hmm. as, as when they were talking about Jesus, right. Where we are God's children. And so what does, what comes with that? You know, what comes with being your father and your mother's child, but do you know what comes with being a child of God? Do you know what, 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 Regalness comes with that, you know? but it comes with a lot of pressure as well. Uh, you know, when you when you think of that, it comes with a lot of pressure because when you think about, okay, I'm releasing, I'm giving up something that I'm used to doing, that I'm used to being able to do on my own, and then when you're saying that now I'm surrendering to God, and there's no more Yolanda, there's no more like I'm, I'm saying that I'm, I'm giving everything up from the worldly point of view to a godly point of view. That's a lot. That's a lot from a, a new person that's trying to walk in in it. And I, I feel like when you have that, a lot of people don't tell you that, oh, it's still going to look bleak. It's still not going to be look like sunshiny roses, you know, once you give your life over to God. I think that, that we need to be honest with those that are coming into it that it's not going to be that right away. It's not going to look like that because in, in his word, he says, you're going to have trials and tribulations. So trial, trials and tribulations does not stop when we say, God, I surrender over to you. It doesn't, it doesn't stop there. It's going to continue, but it's just a different journey and it's a different and walk and I think a lot of people get get confused with that and then like you know w- w- what she was saying it was like it, it it is bleeding over it is bleeding over because it's like okay um I'm, I'm giving up drugs I'm giving up drinking I'm, I'm giving up being promiscuous I'm giving up all of these things God to be with you but then like now that I'm with you I'm still having a temptation 
of wanting to have sex. I'm still having the temptation of wanting to do drugs. It's still, you know, it's still there. And I think a lot of people don't really want to discuss, you know, the realness of when I surrender, am I going to still have these issues? I think that's where we have And I think those, the difference is, too, that when we surrender, we do still have the issues, but the difference between us and the world is that we have God to go with us through Correct. it. And so as right. we're learning, as we're growing in Christ, then we begin to have that um, the understanding we can go to scripture. We know um, we, we start to learn those different foundational things in Christianity that help us to stay. I think about when I, I grew up in the church, but I grew up in a church that was very strict and my household was very strict and I did not want to be saved. I did not want to give my life to Christ. I don't care what gift and calling you gave me or whatever you said was on my life. I did not want it. Mm-hmm. And it was because of everything that I saw and I would, you know, so I know that there are people just like me. I mean, I have friends that were there right there with me and we all did the same thing. And it was just one day for me where I was like, you know, Lord, okay, I'll give it a chance. You know, I'll see what you got. But I, I didn't want, I was like, if I have to, if I can't wear pants, cause that was the thing in my house, you know, if I can't wear pants and I can't wear makeup and, you know, I had never seen boys in the hood or any of those things. If, if that's what this, <laughs> I know you right. can't believe, but I'm like, if that's what this means, right. like, I don't want it. Like, right. that's how, right. that's how I was. And, right. um, but the Lord was like, no, that's not what relationship with me is about. And that's what, you know, I think is important with the church too, is that we, exactly. We're not, we teach religion, but we don't treat, uh, teach relationship. And so, um, you know, and I think relationship is what helps with understanding that identity. identity. Right. Because when you think about a relationship, even in your, your intimate relationships and your marital relationships, you know, um, you still try to maintain a sense of identity. Mm-hmm. You know, you yes, your husband and wife and two have become one, but you are still individual people. And so I even think about that in Christ. Even though, okay, you used to be a drug addict, you used to drink, you used to go to the club all the time, but who were you at your core? What is, who is that person? Mm-hmm. Because I believe that God uses you, who you are. Mm-hmm. Not, yes, you're changed, you're, your mind is renewed, but the person that you were when he met you, just like Paul or Saul on the road to Damascus, he's still going to use that, that yeah. person that's on the inside of you for his glory. And so it, it's not that you are... Uh, not you're not yourself anymore it's that you're being renewed and you're becoming a better version of yourself you know (laughs) but I think too for me I wasn't raised in a church so for me I can say that I didn't know who I was even when it was introduced to me when God was introduced to me I'm like well how can I come to you because I'm a nothing I'm not you know I'm not I'm not cut out for this and you have a lot of people that's like that today they feel like they're not cut out for this world like they're not cut out for this 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 journey you know it, it, even though it's the best journey not, let, me, let me let me correct that right now this is the best journey I could ever want to take um but some people feel like they're not cut out for it because they you know some people make it look like it's easy Right. And instead of being that transparent that this road is not easy, this road is a tough road. Very tough. Right. It, <laughs> it's not an easy journey. You know, just like Jacob, he, he had it hard. You know, all of them had it hard. Job had it hard. Everyone in the Bible had it hard. It, it was not it was not handed to them like just saying, OK, here, you know, it's, it's like, you know, handed to you like a, a silver, uh, a silver platter. It's not handed out to you that easy. So it's, it's you know, being being raised from church family versus non-church family. Even though we still have our our saying, because you had it where you was like, I, I, I don't want right and for me when i first got introduced i definitely was like uh no, the way I'm set up. <laughs> i like the journey that i'm walking <laughs> like you know so I, I i think that we have to also address those that feel like i don't have an identity like who am i really like who am i supposed to be like god don't really want me you know god don't really want to work with 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 somebody like me. I think those are also things for identity crisis that we need to address. And I think too, along with that, um, some people do the opposite too. Like they'll come in and they'll say, well, 
um, since God has called me, I must be this and I must be that. And they're so quick to try to do mm-hmm. 101 different mm-hmm. things in the church and they haven't even learned the foundational exactly. stuff. You know, I, I, I sit in restaurants sometimes and coffee shops and I'm hearing people talk about spiritual warfare. And then, you know, five seconds later, they're talking about something completely opposite. And you're like, well, you know all about the spiritual warfare, but do you know all the foundational stuff? And, you know, and, and just what what I think is really compelling is that um, we have to understand that we're all the same. Like when when I say we're all the same, it's we we're as human beings. We have a we, there's a foundation on the inside of us that's that's very very similar. And even though I was brought up in the church, and and then maybe the next person isn't brought up in the church, um, I think we all feel that same sense of not being worthy. Mm-hmm. You know, we all have not that same belonging. yeah, not mm-hmm. feeling like yeah. you know oh well because because. I could easily say, well, I grew up in the church and I should know these. There's a lot of stuff I don't know about right. church. There's a lot of stuff I don't know about, you know, protocol. Because we went because we had to. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I difference. was just there, right. but it doesn't mean I learned right. anything, exactly. <laughs> you know. And so, I mean, we all go through that. But I think with the identity part, I think that the what I see in the church today and what I, you know, because we you said you wanted to talk. Yeah. yeah. What I see in the church today mostly is there's a lot of people doing things because they can mm. like, well, I can sing. So I'm going to be in the choir, you know, or I can usher. So I'm going to usher mm. or I can play the drums. I mean, my nephew this weekend, you know, yeah. so I'm going to play the drums mm. and it just because you can, doesn't mean you should. should. And so we have some people that um, maybe they were brought up in the church and they're their uh, dad was the pastor and the church gets handed out to him, but maybe they're not supposed to be a pastor, you know, but, right. and then you're wondering why the church is not running, you know, how it's supposed to, or the people are not getting what they need to get mm-hmm. to grow. Like we have to, and, and it's hard when you're first coming to Christ, of course, you're not going to know exactly who you are, but you you're know, still supposed to be learning, but you're learning. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and the journey should, I think that um, I've always said that we are, this thing called life is like our journey to becoming who God created us to be. He said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And so that knowing who he knew us Mm -hmm. to be, this whole life journey is us coming to that person. And when we get to that person, you know, and I just feel we get into that fullness of him, you know? And so um, it's not meant to happen overnight. It takes time and it takes, you know, trial and error. And we're going to, like you said, trials and tribulations. We're going to have, there's going to be some things, you know, that we're going to go through. And, and I mean, but eventually God, what I love is he reveals, as he reveals himself to us, he reveals ourselves to us too, you know? So it's not just him being revealed to us. It's us being revealed to us too through him. But we have to attach ourselves to it. Yes. Because God says, draw near to me. It, 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 It didn't say draw near to Ashley, it didn't say draw near to you. It says draw near to me. So the thing of it is, and, and that's what we have to gravitate to, not gravitating to the ushers, not gravitating to the drummers, not gravitating to the choir. It's gravitating to God's word. It's gravitating to knowing him more in the likeness thereof and knowing who you are in him and not who I need to be for you. Right. That's the biggest difference is because of that. But the thing of it is, is a lot of people don't teach that. And so that's the reason why it's the difficulty of, okay, I can sing, so I'm going to just join the choir. Because since I'm here, I just might as well go on and join the choir. Now, I'm going to omit, I'm going to I'm gonna leave out taking the, the other classes that the, the church is offering. Because right now, all I know, I, I just want to sing. But you're not getting it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it just, but you said come all the, and, and praise the Lord. So I'm praising the Lord. But then when you leave out, then you cussing, fussing, and. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole. Right? That's the whole thing. Saying, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So now you brought up something that I want to touch base on, all pertaining to identity, right? So now you spoke on gifts and talents that, you know, just because you could play the drums, you assume the role of being the drummer for the church. You assume the the role of singing in the choir on the praise team. But then uh, does that get overshadowed with what God ordained and purposed for you to do, even though you have that gift and that talent, God ordained and purposed you, right, to do the will of of why he sent you versus your gift and your talent. And yes, you can sing, but where does your anointing falls when it comes to 
God's will. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. There's a, anointing is the key word there because you know there's a lot of people who can sing, not just sing. sing. They can sing, sing. But, <laughs> but they don't have the anointing. Exactly. And 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 a lot of times we get caught and we're like, ooh, yes, and we're just shouting over what good singing. Or was the Holy Spirit present? And we're missing that because that, that, but I know that's not what we're necessarily talking about, but um, the calling, whatever you've been called to, for, let me just say this. If the church needs a drummer and you can drum, you know, yes, Absolutely. you should, you should step up, but you should also be seeking what it is that God has specifically exactly. called you to do and right. positioned you and, you know, and created you to do. And, and, and I think. I guess I I get real frustrated. <laughs> I get yeah. real frustrated on this topic. I know you probably heard me complain, but um, <laughs> because I the, we have the we have the fivefold ministry, you know, for a reason, and we're 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 there so that we can work together. When I ministered over the weekend, I talked about um, the body and how there's one body and we're many members. First Corinthians twelve and twelve, and so. If we all function how we're supposed to, I even thought about it later and I was like, you know, if, if I'm just a, a stump, you know, just my, my body part and, and the head's not there and the arms aren't there, what what is my stump going to do? What is, what is it going to do? It's not going to do anything but house the organs, but the organs can't do their function because nothing else is attached. And so every function you know, it needs to function how it's supposed to. Every, it yeah, every person needs to be in position. Right. And, and, and I believe that we are in a season where the Lord is calling his church to get in position. And, and if you're not in position, if you're not where you're supposed to be, if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, you might miss it. You might miss him. And so we don't, I don't want to be that person, Neither. you know? And so, um, that's why identity is, you know, really important to understand. And it's not just about, what your title is per se, but each of us have been uniquely gifted, right? We all have gifts and talents. We have um, the the gifts of the spirit that is also in first Corinthians 12. We also have, um, we have callings, right? And then we have skills and we have things that we're really good at. I might be good at um, organizing certain or planning. Let's say that. Mm -hmm. Let's not say organizing. (laughs) I might be good at planning certain things. And so, but that doesn't necessarily mean I'm supposed to be a planner for the church. You know what I'm saying? Just because I'm good at that. But that's just something that, a skill that I have. And what I believe that the Lord gives us these skills for is what? Um, I think you mentioned in your bio, correct me if I'm wrong, that you did accounting. So you might be skilled at accounting, but that doesn't mean you're supposed to be the church accountant and that's your call for the rest of your life. Listen, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but what it probably means is that the Lord gifted you in that area so that you can use it to do the work that needs to be done so that you can do the other thing that he's called you to. Correct. You know, so you can have the income and the financing that is needed so that you can build on that and build the ministry that he's giving you. And so we have to learn like what is working. Some of us may not have ministries we might just have that gift and that's what he's giving you to sustain you so that you can acquire all those things that your heart desires you know like we there's things that the lord gives us um i mean jesus was from a family of carpenters there was a skill there that wasn't his calling but that was his still learned it exactly exactly taught him how to do it so we have to have we all have something but that doesn't mean that that's where where it ends that doesn't mean that that's who our identity is and i think a lot of times we get caught up in our jobs Mm -hmm. and then we're like this is who i am and you know but is it who you are or is this just, you know, the skill that you've been given? You're not just uh, Joseph and Mary's son. I keep going back to that because I always think about that. You know, mm-hmm. they're like, oh, that's just Joseph and Mary's son, you know, the carpenter. Mm-hmm. But that's not who you are. You are more than that. And I know it's hard to figure that out. But we, if we're seeking the Lord while he may be found, if we're drawing near to him, like you said earlier, if we're doing all these things, he be, like, again, he begins to just reveal himself. To but we us. have to ask. And we have to ask. And, and, you know, in Matthew, he said that we have to ask, you know, and, and without asking, then how are we supposed to know? My thing of it is, is that we get comfortable with being comfortable. And God is a God that he makes us uncomfortable to do things his way and not our own way. Mm-hmm. So that's where we also got to we also got to get into that into that mindset of knowing that am, am I doing something for out of my own comfortability or am I doing something out of God's? Mm-hmm. and comfortable because the thing of it is it it is two different things and we have to stop 
putting our earthly comfort there to our spiritual comfort. Those are they're two different things. And so we have to get into that limelight of, okay, like you said, accounting and, and, and me in church. No, ma'am. Um, no. Um, <laughs> but, you know, there's other things that God gifted me with mm-hmm. to use when it comes to in the church as well. So, it, it, again, you know, also getting back to your, your, your question of it is, is just that, um, okay, I, I have a gift of singing. Yes, I need to get in a choir but what else do God need me to do? That's just where he started mm-hmm. me to get a, a foundation, as we talked about in the beginning. He started me to at least going to church. Mm-hmm. So the foundation started with, okay, I need to get in a choir. But that's not where it ends. And mm-hmm. that's the part that we got to see. That, okay, I know how to play drums. That's how he started me to get there. But that's not where it ends. What else, God, do you have for me? Because I, I'll admit, like, okay, the, the work started with accounting, and then when God called me to be an intercessor, I, I said, an inner who? <laughs> oh, oh, wait, what, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, God, now. So that's where, like, now it was, he took me from Yolanda's comfortability to his, and that was the intercession. And I, I and, and when he, I, I was like, you sure? Because I, I think you got me mixed. Up, messed up right so but it was now i was doing his work he had to bring me to the church first mm-hmm. and then to get me to do what he mm-hmm. called me to do in his in in his kingdom so that's where you know some things i can be a singer but it doesn't end there i can be a drummer but it doesn't end there i can be a in it but it doesn't end there so we got to get into where god wants us to be and then he will take Yolanda, remove yolanda so then god can show strong Mm-hmm. So that's what we gotta we gotta definitely get into first. So then, in the midst of you all talking, this scripture that keeps me on my toes, <laughs> right here, seriously, Matthew seven mm-hmm. twenty one twenty three. I'm reading the Amplified version. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will. Of my father who is in heaven, many will say to me on that day when I judge them, Lord, Lord, we have we not prophesied in your name and driven out demons in your name and done many miracles in your name. And then I will declare to them publicly, I never knew you depart from me. You are banished. From my presence, you who act wickedly, discre- uh, disregarding my commands. So it's going to be people doing miracles openly. It's going to be people prophesying openly. It's going to be people delivering demons openly. But that is not even his will. Even though you would think, well, it's in the Bible. Well, I'm doing it in Jesus' name. I'm, you know, thinking I'm advancing the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. But then that's not my will. So what, what, what? Well, so there's so much I could say about that. It makes me think about <laughs> one. Um, I'm not going to say the person's name partially because I don't remember it, but <laughs> there is a person that was <laughs> that was in the news recently or on social media recently that um, it, it really made me think about that scripture when I saw everything that was coming up. And if I say everything, y'all are going to know exactly what I'm talking about. So should I say this, Ashley? I think you should. Okay, so she <laughs> she's a prophetess and a lot of she has a lot of followers. And um, she was basically cursing in the pulpit behind, you know, she was ministering. And then she was, then she started talking about another prophetess, which the word tells us not to touch not mine anointed one. And, um, and so um, then she began to, you know, challenge that other prophetess, you know, meet, meet me outside basically type deal and was then cursed. And there was someone in the, audience not with big eyes like well I don't know we didn't see them but they were like raising their hands talking about amen and praise the lord and 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 the and I went to the comments because the first thing that just really that bothered me obviously but what really rose up in my spirit was they were playing the music in the background <laughs> like she was still ministering and I was like <laughs> Why is that musician still playing? So I had to go to the comments. I was like, is, did someone else feel the same way that I felt about that? But anyway. Listen, he said, No, it wasn't a shout. It wasn't a shout. It was like, like you know, the prophetic flow music. Like the slow music? 
Yes. And so, I, so it made me think about this scripture because it made me think that she didn't think she was doing anything wrong. She's thinking she's doing the will and the work of the Lord. She, I know she did. She did come back later and, and, and repent and apologize. Well, she came back later and apologized. Um, you know, but she said, this is who I am. I'm from Brooklyn. She was like, I'm from New York. <laughs> and she was like, you know, to do with I me. know. <laughs> I just thought about it. As I was <laughs> but no, I don't even know who you talking about. I'm not even on social media. But, like that, but she, um, it, it came across my YouTube, but anyway, so <laughs> she, but, but anyway, so she, um, you know, she was just like, you know, and this is who I am. And that right there showed me that, wait a minute, now we're supposed to have a changed heart, a renewing of the mind. We're supposed to be looking at things differently and having the heart of, you know, the mind of Christ at these things. And you're you're in the, you're in a different position. You're not someone just sitting in the pews. You've got a calling. You've got a title. You've got a church. You've got people that you're a pastor. Like, you've got responsibility. So I take that very seriously. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, and yeah. I'm just like, you know, maybe we'll give a pass for, for you know, Brother Rob. In, in the back corner, but 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 pastor so and so, you know, no, wait, hold on, you're supposed to be edifying and educating these people. Yes, brother Robert, Robert we're gonna have a talk with you off to the side too. But yeah. you know, pastor, come on, you know, is this what we've gotten to? Because you you do have to think about your witness at all times, whether it's in front of people or behind clothes where no one can see you, because God sees all and He hears all, and you have got to. You have got to think about your witness, even if you want to go there, even if you want to snap off and be like, let me tell you who I am. You got to think about who's watching you, who's looking at you, because that can kind of interfere with their walk when they're trying to do the straight and narrow path. And if God is using you for such that time or that season where they're getting the word from you and you're feeding them and they're growing spiritually and that right there. But, you know, and I guess like, you know, like you were saying, prophesy in my name, heal in my name, perform miracles in my name, but I never knew you. When we have a relationship with God, this is like a relationship with anybody that you have. When you have a true relationship with them, then you should be able to go to them, have a conversation with them, be open and honest with them about how you feel. Tell them what was wrong. Tell, exactly. Like there should be, it, it, but, but, but think about how we look at natural relationships and I believe like our spiritual relationship with God is similar, you know, because we should be able to talk to God and God can come tell us, Hey, you're wrong. He'll convict you and so forth and so on. But if you don't feel any conviction, how, I mean, I don't know her relationship and I don't know what she did after that, but, but it would have, it would have, to me, conviction would have happened immediately. You know, you would have felt something. Oh man, I just said, you know, like, Y'all, I'm so sorry. I, I really did. You know, whatever. Yeah. You stop stop the music. Let me let me apologize to the church okay, and then move on or whatever. Right. You know, but not like keep carrying on like this is the way the flow works because now you're you're confusing the body of Christ. And and my point though in all of this is that um, you know, even though you said so you're saying like with the scripture, you know, that um we're doing all these things and you don't know who a person is and they may not have a relationship even though they're doing all these things. This is really rampant in the church right now. That's something to me is a minor sample of what's happening in the church. Yes. Because there's a lot more that's happening that maybe I've never seen or heard about, and I'm sure you've heard and seen some things. There I mean, it's crazy. And and I think it just boils down to the identity part. Do you, are you even, were you even called? And so we're talking about doing the will of the father. Is that his will for you to be in that position? Some people aren't called. Some people just want to be seen. So it's a big difference. You know what I'm saying? Some people just want to be seen. And some people like to have the title. <laughs> um, they feel like they're title approved instead of God approved. So that's where you get it differently at, you know, that, uh, you, you you know you may have gotten uh, a, a, a a vision or something and, and told somebody and then like now all of a sudden you want to say you're a prophet like and that's a big thing because yeah. a lot of people think they but everybody can prophesy everyone has the ability exactly. to prophesy even Saul Saul from the Old Testament prophesied when he was amongst other prophets uh, other prophets though mm-hmm. so it's a bigger difference so you can have a title but that don't mean that. Okay, so now how do you go before the Lord 
or even listen to the voice of the Lord to see where you fit in. What is your identity? What is the will of the Father for you? When you, that's in your silent time. That's in your quiet time. Everybody should have a quiet, silent time with God. I don't care who you are. Mm-hmm. Like, everybody should have that, that, that quiet time, that meditation time. That, that time, no music, no noise, just silent. And God will speak. God, God will tell you what it is he wants you to do. He will move in a certain way. And then it can happen like, you know, if you don't feel like you. you sometimes we got to get into the midst of don't move so fast. Well, okay, it's been five minutes, God. I still <laughs> didn't hear anything yet. You still ain't said nothing yet. But I'm still, whew, I'm still waiting, God. God said, I got a timing. My timing is always perfect. My timing is always on time. And so it's just that you have to sit, be still long enough for God to say what he needs to say. Sometimes God will allow you to hear say, open up my word. And once you open up the, that word, he, that's his word that he's given you. You know, whatever it is at that at that season that you're in and whatever he has to you know, say to you. Um, most of the women that I mentor to, like I tell them, when they read a scripture... You know, if they, they can have their favorite scripture, but every season you in, that scripture is going to speak a different tune to you because it depends on your growth mm-hmm. and it depends on where you are with God. So, mm-hmm. you know, if, if you are, you know, a babe and then when you go from, from, from babe to, you know, an adult, like it, it helps you to, to be developed in where you need to go with God. And so I definitely commend anybody to make sure you have silent time with God Have that quiet time with God. It can be in the shower. It can be in your closet. It can be sitting in your car. It can be, you know, once you put the kids to bed, once you even put your husband to bed, because sometimes (laughs) you even need that, you still need, even if you're married, you still need Mm -hmm. that quiet time for yourself, Mm -hmm. right? So um, I I just think as a man and as a woman, we all need that time where we can just say, okay, we'll side down. You know, I you know the the life noise, the kid noise, the husband noise, the work noise, mm-hmm. all of these noises, and then you need to say, my own mind need to shut up and slow down because now I need to hear from God because you know we in our mind, especially as women, and I'm only speaking because there's women right here on the panel right now, but uh, us as women, our minds is going like, did I change? Did I change my clothes? Did I? Did I put their clothes out? Did, did, did I do this for my husband? Did I, do, did I put that on a shopping list? So it's like still things that's churning, and we have to get to that mindset of, okay, shut up, no more noise, quiet time. I really need that quiet time. So the first thing you do, open up the word, read it, then be quiet, meditate on it, and just, just sit there and, and have that time. No nothing, just you and God, and watch God. Got to talk. Mm-hmm. Got to talk. I think, too, we have to learn the difference between those three voices, you know, God's voice, our own voice, and the voice of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times, um, in my own personal experience, the first two voices I hear are not God. They're usually some doubt that's come in that might be self-doubt. It might be from myself, or it might be the enemy trying to throw, you know, something in there about my past. And then when I quiet, like you said, then I start to hear the Holy Spirit speaker. Um, But also, you know, it's not always negative stuff. Sometimes these thoughts that we have come from our own fleshly desire Mm -hmm. and we have to learn like you have to know that you know that you know like you know lord do you want you know i want some dessert today do you want me to have some dessert chocolate (laughs) you know i was thinking chocolate cake yeah oh so that that must have been the holy spirit (laughs) like because i you know and 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 we have to be he said i can have that chocolate cake now exactly so we have to we have to be honest with ourselves like is it Did God really tell me that or did he not? And, you know, and there's been times I remember someone pointed out to me um, a relationship that I had a long time ago. They were like, I remember you said that was supposed to be your husband. I said, and I did say that. And I did Mm -hmm. think that. Mm -hmm. And I did feel like the Lord told me that. Mm -hmm. And I said that. But I never I didn't tell him the second part of that, which was um, the Lord also showed me because I was like, well, Lord, am I confused? Because I really thought that, you know, but then the Lord showed me Saul and when uh, Samuel told Saul to go in and kill 
all it was a Samuel. Told him to go in and yes. kill all of the uh, all the people and leave mm-hmm. no one and nothing. Right. But he didn't do what he was told to do, right. and so he didn't get what he was gonna have. Yeah. That's what the Lord pointed out to me. I said, "Okay, Jesus, will you free me from that one?" That you know, he didn't do what he was supposed to do, so he didn't get the prize because it was your fleshly <laughs> that wanted it and not the spirit. So, that, and that's another thing we gotta and recognize. The Lord will give you that. Now, this Come you on. know from my mom, Come on <laughs> she'll now. tell you the Lord will give you what you want. I mean, the Bible says it. Mm -hmm. So you ask enough. He's a good father. Why wouldn't he say, well, you know what? Go ahead and get it. What do you say to your children? They keep begging you enough for that candy or that ice cream or whatever. Go ahead and go, oh, I want to go outside. Just go. I'm, you know, <laughs> eventually you just give in. And, and not just saying that the Lord, you know, it's not what he wants. But sometimes what we're asking the Lord for at that time is not ready yet. And you talked about timing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so when we get it, because it's not ready, it's like eating a roast you know, I don't know why that came to my mind. I must be hungry. But it's like eating a roast that's not fully cooked, you know. Right, yeah, right. And then you're like, now you're you're wishing that you would have waited, but you didn't. Now you just got to suffer through the consequences and finish that meal. And, so, and then people are like, well, I, I thought this is what I was supposed to have. But because you were impatient, you talked about patience earlier, you know, because you were impatient, you got what you wanted, but it wasn't how God wanted you to have it. Right. And if you would have waited, you would have got, and I know that's. But God gives us yeah. what we need, what not what we want. Mm-hmm. We be trying to line up our wants with what God needs for us, but at the end of the day, just like you know, like you you said, like the the first guy that you wanted, but God gave you a husband that you needed. Mm-hmm. So it's a big difference. Of oh, I wanted that. Husband. I wanted my husband. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> but but I will say I will um you know I I will say this too when we are um, asking the Lord for something when we're asking Him for. Um, our desires. I remember when he, when I first would read that scripture about him de- giving us the desires of our hearts, mm-hmm. the Lord said it's because he puts them there. Like he gives right. us desires. Right. But right. then he took me a little further, like you were saying with the scripture, like mm-hmm. as you grow in Christ, you start to learn a little bit more. Because I wrote on that for a long time. Like mm-hmm. he's giving, giving me, me these desires. Want, right. like he, right. I, the only reason like, I so want it is because, up, yeah, exactly. I only want it because he, t- he put it in my heart. But he's, then he started to show me, but the only way that he can put it in my heart is that I'm in alignment with, with his, his will. will. And so that was the next step of it. So he helped me to see that, yes, I will give you the desires because I'm going to make you desire what I want you to have. But you was patient enough with it. Some people, we got to get patient with that part of it. Don't just have the one verse that, oh, okay, but he said that I should have the desires and then you just sit right there. No, no, no. Like we got to be, you, you, it, it, there's the next part to it. Don't just stay at that one yourself. part. Exactly. So don't just stay at that one part. Yes, God is going to give you the desires of your heart, but align yourself mm-hmm. with what his will is. Align yourself, be impatient, because especially we are impatient beings. There's no, like, I don't care who you are. I don't care. You can be in church forever. You still have, there's a little piece of you that still have an impatience mm-hmm. about you. But, you know, there there's there's God's wisdom because every door is not necessarily meant for us to go through. Every door is not meant for us to open it. So God says, okay, just hold on because what I'm preparing for this door, I need you to be ready for it. Just because you say you're ready you don't mm-hmm. actually know what's on the other side of that door. That that reminds me of two things. One, this TikTok video I saw yesterday where this baby had a, had this car, this little, you know, this little mm-hmm. cars. And instead of opening the door and getting in the car, she starts trying to climb in the window. And, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and her mom's like, you know, and so this is just how the Lord does us. He gives you something and there's a door. But instead of walking through it, you want to climb through the window. And, you know, and I was talking to someone the other day about that. I said, you know. We, why are you talking about kicking down a door? Like, I'd rather just open it and walk. Like, why am I doing all this combative stuff? stuff? Why am I pulling up a chair at, at bringing my chair to somebody else's table? He said he would prepare a table before, before me you. in the presence of my Come enemies. I'm going to sit at the head of the table. Why am I trying to put a folding chair at right. the back? Like, y'all trying to do too much. Like, right. just wait and let the Lord do it. Like, and I'm not just saying that because of scripture, but like, really, like, let him do it. And then, mm-hmm. you know, the delighting part of that scripture, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart, mm-hmm. you know, delight. So when we delight ourselves, that's part of becoming in alignment. You start to everything about him just becomes, yeah, exactly. you know, exciting to you. You're putting him first mm-hmm. in all things, you know, and, and that just means and, and I say it all the time and I know it sounds, you know, cliche, but like 
put him first. Like, okay, Lord, I know you don't have to ask him for everything. You don't have to ask him how to comb your hair, how to brush your teeth, you know, what you should have for breakfast. Mm -hmm. There are some occasions where you might need to, you know, and you would know if you're being led by the Holy Spirit that you might need to ask for those things. Especially if I want a chocolate cake for breakfast. (laughs) But but putting him first will give you those things. It will give you those things that you desire. Mm -hmm. But but I think going back to identity because I know you like we don't went all into it. You know, we're being led by the like Holy Spirit, right? so whatever we're speaking for, it's Holy Spirit led. So it'll all come together. But I think that you know, um, getting to that point because we were talking about hearing, we were talking about hearing mm-hmm. from Him and knowing who He's called us to be, and just getting to that point of being t- led by the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Not everybody knows how to do that. Not everybody understands when the Holy Spirit is speaking. Not everybody knows um, if they're being spirit led or self led. And I think again, it goes back to spending time. You know, like what she was saying earlier, spending time um, in your quiet time with the Lord, um, and that right there teaches you how to understand His voice. You know, and then also just really understanding your own fleshly desires and knowing the difference, aligning your will with his will, not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. And so when you, when you say that enough and in sincerity, when you make that part of your prayer life and that's part of the surrender, when you do that, it will eventually not be your will. You will get to that place. I'm telling you, I never wanted to be a minister. I never wanted to prophesy. My Bible has prophetess on it, but do you know it took me 15 years to take the cover off for people to see it? No one knew but me and God and the person who put it on this Bible (laughs) that it said that, you know, because it wasn't, it wasn't, I didn't do it for anyone. I put it on there because the Lord said, this is who you are. And I wanted to say, okay, Lord, I'm, I, I am receiving who you've called me to be, but, but now that I know I'm going to let you train me and prepare me and get me ready to be who you've called me to be. And so, and that was, that was a lot. If I had my way, Ashley, I would have a really tall building. Um, it probably would be a law firm with my name on it. And then I'd also be a model on the side somewhere in Australia. I don't know, maybe South Africa, um, <laughs> but I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be doing this. You know what I'm saying? I, I wouldn't be, it would, that was not my desire that was not the path that I wanted to go but I surrendered my will for the Lord's will mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Same. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely the same I just told you like when he said intercessor because it started out that and I was like an inner who and then when it went when he started doing the rest I said wait God wait pump your brakes just a little bit because like I I felt like I was like God that you know you're going too fast and literally he, le- he led me to Ecclesiastes and I was like Okay, but you're saying your timing, but um, um, <laughs> am I on time? <laughs> so, I mean, that's just a sense of humor in myself, but I agree with you uh, wholeheartedly. You know, sometimes we feel as though that, you know, we're saying, uh, God, but, you know, can I, can I take these itsy bitty steps? But God says, no, I'm making room for you. I need you to do some things. I'm, I'm lining up some things for you. So even though we want to take these itty bitty steps, committee tiny steps he like no no i need you to to go on head on and i i need you to be comfortable in me i don't need you to be comfortable for ashley i need you to be comfortable in me because in me is the identity Mm -hmm. in me is who you are not who who like your mama painted a picture because your mama had you not because your daddy told you to do this that not because grandmama but it's who i called you to be for me and so it's just like um when abraham when he told him you was gonna be many a nations if i was abraham i would have been like you you um i i'm I would have been stuttering like Moses. <laughs> I would have really been like, God, is you, 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 I, I don't think you really called me to, you know, to do that. But, you know, um, I, it, it's in many a times, you know, e- even for Joseph when he had the first dream. And then when it was leading him up to where God had for him, Joseph still wasn't ready. Joseph still wasn't prepared. So even though God called you in that, he was still preparing you, mm-hmm. still preparing me. For, for what God God is calling us to do. And it's been many, like you said, like the law firm, mine would have been a, a, a doctor's firm. And 
I would have been like, okay. <laughs> but it was still things that he would God hire had. us for your right. suits and stuff. Because yeah. then he said that part. Because he said he knows the plans that he has for us. And when God knows the plans, is way better than our plans. And even though we, he told us to the right division and make it plain, it's still his vision. It's still his plan. Mm-hmm. Because then we're walking in him and not us. And so that's where the whole identity is coming in at is that we got to learn who we are in God, not who we are in man. Oh, that's good. And since you said that, because Uh-oh, I was I, waiting I'm for the opportunity. No, no, no. I was waiting <laughs> for the opportune time because I wanted to hear both of you all out, just waiting for me to get in where I fit in. And so when you said the last part, what happens when the leadership, God is right here, right? Above all, God is here. And then there's the leadership. And then here's you. And what happens when God is telling you one thing, but your pastor, whoever the leadership is, is saying it's something totally different and wants you to be here because you are just gifted. When you start to sing, they throwing the money out. You gotta be you gotta be steadfast and firm in God. You gotta know who God is for you. Just because you're under a leader, you still gotta that's 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 between you and God in your silent time. Because God mm-hmm. can even though he's telling a leader to do X, Y, and Z, right? And, 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 and sometimes it can be that maybe you're not meant to be there, and sometimes you are, but sometimes it can be if you are meant to be there, it's just God is saying, there's some steps that I need you to go to before I take you to. And then if you're not meant to be there, God will show you that as well. So both ways, you know, God, God is going to order your steps because we're, we're saying order thy steps, God, and, into your works and into your will. And so... You know, it, there, like I said, there's many occasions where when you have that leader, it can be two things. It's either God is showing you that there's a shifting for you, that he doesn't want you to be there, or he's telling you that there's some things in this leader that I need you to know and get before I move you elsewhere. Mm-hmm. So there, 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 there's, a, there's a lot. There's definitely a lot to that. Mm-hmm. But you've got to be still, and you can't move until God tells you to move. Because mm-hmm. sometimes when we move out of order... That's what I was about to say. Right? Yeah. When we move out of order, then th- th- there's costs to that. Because God will, God will, he will, he will, okay, so if we take it outside of the church and just think about a job, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes the Lord will say, this is what I want you to do. You're working a nine to five and this is, this is, you know, what your, this is your job. But he's giving you something else. He's giving you vision for something else. He did that for me on on my last job, but it wasn't time for me to leave yet. And so the way he instructed me to depart was to prepare my, I call it an exit strategy. Mm -hmm. And I mean, when I say exit strategy, it was, he had me, you know, making all my, because I had full medical. So I was doing all my medical appointments. I was getting everything done that needed to be done. I was making sure everything was established and everything was in, in place before I stepped out. Not necessarily, I didn't necessarily have all the money that I needed, the finances, Mm -hmm. but I had just those other things. And it also helped to get my mindset ready, Mm -hmm. you know, for what was next. But the Lord knew. And so when he, when the time came, it just happened. It wasn't even like, I didn't even have to force it again, talking about kicking down doors and all that stuff. I didn't have to force it. I didn't have to, right. it wasn't a big scene. Mm-hmm. And when I left, I t- that was seven, eight years ago when I went full time. Um, and I can tell you today, if I walked in that place today, they would give me my job back mm-hmm. because of the way I left. Mm-hmm. You know, and so, you know, the Lord will have you do things in such a way. In order. Exactly. I mean, I know a um, my pastor, for instance, his armor bearer it has his own church now mm-hmm. and he armor bear it for him for years. Mm-hmm. And he, you know, he went and helped him, him up for that. Exactly. So mm-hmm. it wasn't. But, he, you know, he I'm sure he's always known he was called to pastor. Mm-hmm. But it just wasn't time for him to be released yet. And so there was, and it just so happens, you know, now he's married now. He's in a, you know, good relationship. Like everything that he needs, the tools and the equipping, everything he needs to go forth in that Mm -hmm. church and, you know, and do what needs to be done. The the Lord has now placed in his, in his hands and, you know, he's in that place. Mm -hmm. So we have to, we have to just trust God's time. Even if you know something, I think it's just, I think that's part of the hope that God gives us to let us know. You know, this is 
what I'm calling you to. This is what I have for you, Mm -hmm. but just not now, but I'm just showing you what's coming. Just even like with Joseph, you brought up Joseph when he um, interpreted the dream, Mm -hmm. it was a famine that was coming. So it wasn't like go act hysterical right now. It's just, I'm letting you know what's coming, what's ahead so you can prepare. But it doesn't mean that, you know, you just disappear and let everything go now. It just means that now you have the foresight. And we, I think we don't, we, that's where we miss it sometimes because God doesn't give us the whole picture and, and step by step, but mm-hmm. he just, he gives us foresight. He gives us a little bit here and there to kind of show us what the, you know, the leading and the unctioning is as he's preparing us and we laying it out. be careful who we tell. That. Because see, Joseph told the wrong people. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it goes into a little bit of. Either you know, <laughs> well, I yeah, thought that for a while. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that, for, like, yeah, telling your dad, but he, he told, but it, it all led up to. I think where they God were had part of God's plan. process. Yeah, right? I think that but he I'm had to tell them. Today, sometimes we got to be careful who we tell certain certain things to because everybody is not working for our good. And that's true. And I think, like, you know, so I think I look at Joseph because I look at because I know it's told both ways. That's why he's not. Yeah. And we've been I've just done I've been doing a um, Bible study on Joseph for the past uh, 10 weeks. Mm-hmm. And so we uh, when I looked at it, though, I, you know, I was like, you know, Lord, it looks like at first, you know, you're like, man, if he would have never told them, mm-hmm. he wouldn't have gotten thrown in the pit. He wouldn't have been sold into slavery. Mm-hmm. And, you know, everything would have been good. But then if he had not have told them mm-hmm. here we are in, you know, 10, 10 weeks later, they wouldn't be in Goshen right now, right. the whole right. family. Right. Right. And so I believe it was a setup. But here's the thing, too. I think that when he went to tell them he had he had a good heart, he had good intentions. And so I think the Lord allowed, you know, it. I think sometimes when we we have to be careful of when we're telling people stuff. Yeah why we're telling them exactly what the intention is in our heart. You know, are we telling them to try to make them jealous? Or are we just telling them because we're excited about it? Mm-hmm. And then we do need to have the right people. Cause you know, like you said, cause we have to have godly counsel. Yeah. So I think that's the part there, making sure the people we have around us. And sometimes you don't know, you don't know who has your best interests at heart. Sometimes you think people do and they don't, but you don't know that. Um, but then Jesus had Judas and, you know, and he had him for a very long time and he knew who he was, but he stayed with him the whole time until the very end. So, some, you know, sometimes it, it, it it's, I wanted to say it bees like that sometimes, <laughs> you know, but they're just, they're just like that sometimes, you know, but, like you know, like but I mean, but you're right that we do have to be careful. Um, but I also think that sometimes. You know, because he says what the enemy meant for evil, God will use it for his good. So mm-hmm. sometimes don't beat yourself up is what I guess I want to get at. Just because you feel like you might have told the wrong person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because God will turn that around. For your good. Yeah. And that's what he did. To yeah. us. That's why I was I, I, I was just doing an, an analysis. So if you're doing both, it's like as, as being Joseph, should I have told them? You know, sh- you know, should not. But I was I was saying that, too, when you had said that he had told and when he had the dream, he was expecting it to happen right away. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we have to get out of that expectation of, OK, God gives you a dream. God gives you a vision that is supposed to happen like right That's then and there. That's what I thought when no. I got saved. <laughs> no, I didn't, it, I didn't get right taught away. nothing about no sub, long suffering and all of this stuff. I was oh, like, the fruit of the spirit. Right. I was like, <laughs> where the blessings at? Right. <laughs> Well, he's yep. not a genie. And, you know, and, and you're right, though, because I, my brother-in-law was upset, you know, at one point because he was, t- I remember him saying that, um, you know, oh, well, my mom prayed and she read her Bible and all this stuff still happened to her. And I don't get it. And I said, well, Jesus isn't a genie in the bottle, wow, right. you know, and, 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 and everything that your mom did, it bled over into you guys. So just because she didn't see it doesn't mean that you guys won't see because we also know Jacob, you know, he didn't get to go back to Caden, but he, but his family did, Yeah, you know, so he still, they still received what God had given him. But I mean, you know, the, 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 the best thing I think about Joseph was he was, he had the dream. He was excited about, it. he told the people about it. Then he went and told him again. So see, he didn't learn the first time. If we were on that <laughs> that's same right. thought, you know, cause he went and told him the next right month. away though. That's the thing. He did it again because it didn't happen for him like right away. And like you said, God is not a genie in a bottle. We had this magic wand. People just 
Ocus poke. No, it, it doesn't work like that. Some things he does let allow right. happen right away, and others is it's a it's a process. So it's trust in the process, and we don't like the process at all. I, I think when we first get saved, he gives us like these little things immediately. Yeah, you know? I was excited like, oh, oh, yeah. Jesus, that's the best thing that but then, to me. As time goes on, it just takes. There's a little bit longer delay, but. <laughs> longer delay. And then you're like, hold on. I'm like, uh, now, wait a minute now. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't, uh, these trials, Lord, right. it's getting hot in this furnace now. Now, wait a minute now. What's going on? Absolutely. All right. Any final thoughts? Anything that you want to say to the audience that the Lord is placing on your heart to say? Go ahead. <laughs> You know, I, I know we talked about a lot tonight and or today, so I just want um, to just make sure that, you know, at the end of the day, you are a child of God. And if you don't know what your call is, you don't know um, what your position or place is in the church or any of those things, just continue to seek after the Lord and, and just listen for his voice. If you're not quite sure what that is, to spend time in his presence. And the longer you do, the more you will draw nearer to him, the more you will hear his voice clearly and understand what he is saying. And don't be discouraged. Don't give up on the church because of what you see. Um, and when I say church, I'm talking about the body of Christ, you know, just because of what you see when you um, look at the body of Christ, don't, because they are just like you. And so we, 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 we don't want to give up on God because of people, we want to stay close to him and, and and understand that people, you know, make mistakes, but God never makes mistakes. And so um, that that that's it. I just wanted to encourage you to really just seek out your identity, who God has called you to be, how he has gifted you so that you are in his will. That's the safest place to be. Um, first, I want to say thank you for having me. Thank you and, and appreciate you so very much. And sis, it's good to meet you um but along with what she said i totally agree seek god for you not for we're saying seek god for you because at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day you have to know who god is for you. we are all different um, we may look the same we may breathe the same we all may bleed the same but we only serve one god and um he is our trinity he's the father son and the holy spirit Seek him for what you strive for. What is it that you need help with? What is it that you need yearning for? What is it that you feel as though, like, like, like my sister just said, you don't know who God is. You don't, you don't know His voice. You're not familiar with a lot of things of what you hear other people say. But I will always say, know God for you. It's best to know God for you. Stay in His word. Stay rooted and grounded. Stay in silent time. Stay in prayer. You know, have that five minutes. If you can't give five, God five minutes of your time, then you're not going to ever be ready for this journey. But it's a journey, I promise you. I promise you. It's a journey worth taking. If you know that you know that you know that God is the author and finisher of it all. Just, just try it. I promise you. I promise you. You're going to love it. <laughs> yes. And, um... Just to close out and just to really encourage you, thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing and liking and commenting on this, uh, the live talk show. I really appreciate you. And I just want to leave you with this is doing the will of God. You may have your desires. You may have what you want to do, and that's fine. But at the end of the day, really seeking first the kingdom and his righteousness and then all these things added to you. Let him add whatever he wants to add to you that is in his will, his desire for you, because we know that it works all together for your own good and that it will give him glory doesn't matter what man says doesn't matter what we say on this panel read the word and study to show yourself approved we study to show ourselves approved so we can be in right standing with the lord because uh he will correct and he also will chastise those that he loves and so with that said uh we don't want to be in error we don't want you to be in error Work out your salvation with fear and trembling, but make sure that God's voice is more prominent in your life than any other voice. And also test the spirit. Whoever's coming to you saying something that you may not agree with your spirit, take it back to your heavenly father and let God deal with it.
So, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. Father God, I cover what was spoken with the blood of Jesus, Father God, that it will not be uprooted, Father God, that it will not fall on um on shallow ground, Father God, but Lord, it will be planted in the hearts, in the minds of your people, Father God. Do what you will do, Father God, for you to get the glory, for you to get the honor, Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord. I thank you, Father God, for what you are doing, Lord. I thank you for how you're moving, Father God, in the lives of your people, Father God. I pray for the truth to prevail, Father God, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. No weapon formed against us, against you, shall prosper in Jesus name we pray and ask for the will of our heavenly father in Jesus name and we thank you and we cover it all thank you so much I will see you all next week actually next Saturday I will be interviewing Yolanda about her testimony and so there's a lot uh, that she has to say, and I am so ready and so excited because she shared a little bit with me, and I think that it would just minister because everyone has a be for Christ, and then you come to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and then you start walking out the journey with him, right? You're not alone. You're not by yourself. You start to walk out the things that he has for you, and so I think it'll be a, a great interview like so many others. So thank you all. God bless you, and I will see you next Saturday.